All right, let's go to uh, beautiful Chestnut Hill, see what's going on with Jeff Halfley. He's got an open date. Coach, always a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, last couple of weeks have been pretty good, but hey, what is up with these games, man? You're, you're going to age. You're going to look as old as I am at the at this rate. Every game's 27, 24, five of your six games by three points or less. Man, you know, grab your popcorn and stay late because it's coming down to the last play if BC's playing. Yeah, um, 27, 24, three games. I think we've played the most yeah. um, three-point games in the country right now. Hopefully uh, we can start to pull away, but – the last two weeks have been nice, winning those games at the end, and um, it's it's been exciting, that's for sure. Uh, the the toughness factor. I know we talked about that with you before the season, and getting every these all the guys back, especially on that offensive line. But mental toughness that comes down to it here, doesn't it? I mean, especially coming off kind of a, a choppy start, where you could say, ah, oh, here we go again. You guys haven't quit. And again, I, I know the last time we talked to you, you said, hey, we're going to clean up these penalties. We're going to get to work. This is a good football team. Your guys are starting to prove it at the right time. Yeah, they are. Um, one, we have a tough, resilient team. I mean, even if you look back to that Florida State game, we're down 21 points in the third quarter. We come all the way back and, you know, we're missed extra point away from tying it. And then we go down to Virginia 14 and, and we beat them and we score. I mean, I think in the second half we had 256 yards and they had 35. And then we go to Army and, you know, that's a team that had been running the ball well and scoring a lot in their first couple drives. They go three and out three times in a row and have 11 yards. And we're in a monsoon trying to see if our quarterback can run for more than their quarterback. Um, but the resiliency of this team to go down and then come back, clean up the penalties, um, play disciplined football, two wins in a row, getting, uh, getting to the bye at 500, back in it. Uh, I'm proud of this team and the way they've responded because certainly they could have went in the other direction. Your quarterback, we just talked about him. We showed the statistics. Thomas Castellanos, he, we, all of us, uh, enjoy watching him so much. He's electric, I'm sure, for you on the sideline, too. Every single move he makes, you're wondering what's going to happen next. Uh, for a guy that was kind of thrust into the fire, right, early in the season and, and has figured out his way through uh, successfully, What's the focus for him this week? You have a buy, a chance to focus on yourselves. Uh, what are you doing with Thomas Castellanos, and what are you really focused on? Yeah, that's a good question, Taylor. We're starting to find out what he's good at. You know, in training camp, we really didn't know who the quarterback was. You know, we felt like after that first game, he took over. And now we're really spending time and looking back through the cutups to see what does this guy do best? What's he best in the pass game? What's he most comfortable throwing the ball? We know we can run it. We know the design quarterback plays. We'll still add those. But what can he do best throwing the football? And that's what we've really spent the last two or three days doing to try to really tailor it towards him. Um, and I think he's just scratched the surface right now. And he's a real exciting player to be around. And he's a great kid. Coach, we always talk about those open dates, right? You, you really, before season starts, you can never really predict, hey, we got a good break or a bad break. You, it just has to happen. Uh, does the open date come at a good time in terms of, hey, it's the middle of the year, or does it come at a, a time where you're going, hey, man, we've won two in a row. We want to go play again this week. How, well, how would you answer that? Yeah, I think, I think you can look at it both ways. You know, we were sitting there at one and three, and uh, we knew we had two games. We thought they were two winnable games, and we thought we could get those two and then kind of catch our breath, get some guys back healthy, and then go into the back half of the season. So I do think it comes at a, at a really good time. We had some guys that were banged up, some guys that were tired, and now you can feel the momentum, you can feel the confidence in practice, and they're in a really good place. The team's gelling. We're starting to see what the identity of this group is on both sides of the ball. They're becoming closer together. So I do. I think it comes at a really good time. Um, we got to make sure that we keep the momentum because sometimes you're right in these bye weeks, you kind of get out of whack. Your routine's different, and you come out in that first half or that, that game right after the bye, and you're a little bit out of sync. So that's going to be really important for us. It, with everything you've gone through to climb back to 500 right now and now to take a break, I know you can preach everything you want to know early in the season. It was the penalties and, and all that stuff. Uh, who are the guys on your team that have really risen to the occasion and have repeated your message back. The guys that you're looking at to say, hey, I know I'm the coach, but I need you to be the players, coaches on the field as well. Yeah, you know, on offense, it's the O-line's really kind of led the way. We're, we're running the ball really well, and that group's really kind of taken everybody together. I think Lewis Bond has really stepped up his role, obviously him and Thomas. And then on the D-line, uh, Donovan and those guys have done a really good job. De Palma, one of our best leaders, 
we, we thought we played really well in the Florida State game and then didn't really play well against Louisville. And if you look, that's the one game we kind of came out flat and the guys kind of got together and said, you know what? You know, we think we can score a lot of points and we know we can play defense and, you know, there's a lot of noise out there. Tune it out and, and go play ball. And they did. And that's why I'm most proud of them. Um, because a lot of people counted them out at one and three, and they fought back. And now they're sitting back at 500, and they're in it. And I give credit to the team, guys like Donovan, guys like Vinny, and guys you know, like Drew Kendall and, and those guys up front who uh, you know, they really believe in this team. And, and these guys are confident, and I'm excited to see what they can do now. You mentioned the offensive line and how successful things have been this season. Knock on wood, of course. You can rest up during the bye week, too. But last year, uh, we don't have to tell the story. You guys were decimated due to injury. And, and this week, you lose Ozzie Trapillo, and then you have Jack Conley, who steps right in. Are you seeing now the silver lining, maybe, to what happened last year, paying off this year because of that depth that you do have on your O-line? Yeah, uh, you, you bring up a great point. We're sitting there last week in the staff meeting, and it's, you know, Ozzy's probably not going to be able to go. Hopefully he'll be back for Georgia Tech. And you use the next man up analogy, but, but for the old line, it's easy because you got, you know, Conley was a starter. Kevin Klein was a starter. Uh, Dwayne Alec was a starter. And all these guys have had to play in games, and you don't blink. And the team doesn't blink because they trust these guys who started last year in games. So now we have depth there. And while we want to have Ozzy back, um, and he's a great player, you know, Jack went in and he did a really nice job. Coach, it's all about the cheeseburgers, man. I, I, you know, I know you're going to take credit with X's and O's and stuff, but quite frankly, it's because me and Taylor up there, you know, eating all that beef with your boys. I mean, that, that's that's what spurred all this on with that offensive line. I hate to break the news to you. It's all about the cheeseburger. When you, when you coming back and getting more? We could we could use it during a bye week if you want to come out this weekend. Hey, let me tell you, you know, all you need to do is call. I mean, and I never, you know, once the season starts, you never call me. It's just like, well, I'll pack I'll do with you postseason, all that kind of stuff. I mean, we'll be up there in two seconds. It's always a great road trip to Boston. We'll be there before you know it. We had a great time with your guys. That was a blast. I got to schedule some more time in my week. Try to try to fit you in for a call and invite you up next time. <laughs> with that, we got, with we've that got being a couple said. things going on. I've been busy. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't think we quote we were, we were. I didn't sense that we were quite a priority for you from that standpoint. By the way, I'm going to let you put your BC head coaching cap to the side a second. You have seen Florida State and you have seen Louisville. Uh, the league right now has three undefeated teams. Throw North Carolina into the mix. Uh, how would you compare and contrast Florida State and Louisville from from your eyes seeing these teams up front? Yeah, and I think I, I think I might have said this to you the last time we talked. Uh, I think Florida State's one of the best teams that I've seen since I've been back in college football. When you go across uh, pregame and you see how big they are up front, how big their backs are, how big their wideouts are, they're as impressive as a group as I have seen, and, and I really mean that. And they are physical, and they play fast, um, and I think their scheme's really good. You know, Louisville, the one thing that really jumped out to me was their speed, especially watching them play at home. Um, again, when I watched them play Notre Dame the other night at home, gosh, they were so fast. Their receivers, their running back, um, and obviously I think Coach Brom's done a really good job. I think, I think that's a really athletic team on both sides of the ball where Florida State's kind of, they got the combination of the size and the speed, both really good football teams and obviously have represented the ACC very well so far. You know, you've been in the league long enough now, uh, and almost every time we talk to a head coach, we talk about the quality depth of the league. Greg McElroy the other day said, hey, the ACC is six, seven, eight teams deep, and even the guys on the lower tier, if you will, man, they can punch up and get you if you're not paying attention. I, I don't think the league's ever been as deep as it is right now, which, again, maybe that open date does come at a good time where you can take a deep breath because I think your schedule is manageable. For the next couple of weeks coming after break, we can keep building up on this momentum. But, but have you seen the league as deep since you've been in the ACC? No, I'd agree with you. This is, this is probably the most. If, if you look at the guys at the top right now, it's going to be interesting as they continue to play each other. And then you got the rest of us right now who are kind of battling. And, um, you know, some have started off slow and, and some have started off hot. But I, I think you're going to see it all balance out as we all have to play each other this year. And there's no Atlantic and Coastal. 
I mean, like you said, we, we go to Georgia Tech and, and then we have one more non-conference game and then it's all conference games and pretty much the rest of the league is going to be in the same situation. So you're going to see a lot of people knock off people and you, you better not take anyone on the bottom end lightly because all these guys got good players that could knock you out at any moment. I think our game at Florida State is a great example. No, we're, I think, 28-point underdogs and an extra point away from going overtime. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And, you know, the guys who are at the top right now, they might not be at the top by the end of the season. And I'm just looking forward to our next six games um, and really excited what this team can do. We've got a talented group. We really do. we got an electrifying quarterback. We're good up front on both sides of the ball. And our guys now, after two wins in a row, we got some youth. They're learning how to win football games. And I'm sure there's a lot of other teams like that in the same situation. Yep. I know you mentioned how busy you are. And uh, you're probably focused still on football this week, even though it's a quote unquote bye week. You get a couple of minutes to yourself to decompress, to disconnect for a second. And what are you going to do with that time, even if it's just five minutes to yourself? No, I'm going to I'm going to make sure I take Saturday off, uh, make sure our coaches take Saturday off. A lot of guys have been on the road recruiting and now we're back in the office. Try to make sure guys get home to dinner to see their families when they're around. That's really important to me. And I want everybody to get away on Saturday, uh, go see their kids, go see their wives, go see their families. Um, that's usually fits in October. You go to the pumpkin patch, you get your kids pumpkins, carve a little, uh, carve little pumpkins up at, at nighttime and hang out with the kids and my wife. I mean, that's, you got to take advantage of those times because the season gets tough. Well, you have always had life as a, from a balanced perspective. It's one of the things I've always respected about you. You're a good coach. Uh, you know what's right from wrong, and again, it's all about making sure everybody gets taken care of. And uh, you're an easy guy to root for, Coach. I've said that a hundred times. And uh, thrilled that you guys have kind of got this thing on a roll. And look forward to watching good stuff here in the second half of the season for you. I really appreciate you saying that. I've been a big fan of you guys. You've always treated us really well, and this is nice. We take a deep breath, and then let's see what, if we can do some damage in the ACC. I like this team. Sounds and good. I like where we're headed, and I appreciate you so guys. You got it, man. Enjoy that pumpkin patch. I'm jealous. That, that and those cheeseburgers up there, man. You got life right where you want it. Talk to you. <laughs> see ya. All right, guys. I'll see you. Thanks, Coach.